look out. Oh, there was something going up behind me. Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you? What a lovely day. I'm going the windy route today, which is the slightly slower route because I don't have anybody in for 40 minutes and it only takes 20 minutes either way, really. And I do prefer this route, I must say. It's more sort of interesting, although it's, the other one is less challenging to drive. So how are things, how are things going? Look at my hair. My hair is just ridiculously long. I'm gonna come up behind a thing called the, the vegetable picker. It's my own fault, I know it leaves. It leaves literally from my next door neighbor's farm, 200 yards away, and it leaves sometime between 8.15 and 8.20 every day. So I think they get there for eight and then they have a cup of tea or something, or a a bottle of vodka, whatever these pickers have. And then they jump in this old thing and it carts them off to where they're going to be picking vegetables. Usually cauliflowers. So uh, if you like your cauliflower cheese, then this is where it all starts with the vegetable picker. The only problem with it is it goes at, uh, at about 12 miles an hour and uh, if they're going to a field that's two miles away, that's a, you know, that's a, that's a slow old journey. Sometimes it pulls in to let people pass. Most of the time it doesn't. Or I might not have rescued the video footage, in which case you might wonder what the hell I'm talking about. <coughs> oh. In case I forgot to say, I'd like to say hello to the one person who watches these who got in touch with me the other day and said that they were pleased I'd started doing them again. I've got uh, this Calajet system, which if nothing, if nothing else, these videos are useful from the point of view of product reviews because I buy this stuff so you don't have to. And uh, the Calajet to re recuperate for those of, I know that's the wrong word, to recuperate for those who don't. <laughs> um, I didn't see my last video, it's an intraligmental injection system. Ah, it looks like it's just turning right here. So, I think we might be all right. And uh, what you do is you literally uh, just poke it on the person's gum, uh, up the ligament, and then uh, stand there while it beeps for about a minute or two. So, we're sort of, uh, we're using it on every single patient because we want to get very quickly a very good idea of what it works on and what it doesn't. So in terms of anesthesia, you've got regional block anesthesia, which we tend to use on the mandible, and that's how we're all trained. Uh, and that, which is fiddly, and to be honest with you, in my hands is unreliable. Um, and also very dose dependent, you know, some, you get some people who need half the standard dose, then you get other people who need twice the standard dose, and then you can't, uh, and then you can't work on them literally for 20 minutes, sometimes 30 minutes, if they're, because, so you've got some people who go numb very quickly, and then other people who uh, go numb very slowly, so, uh, and by the time you've sort of found out, the telling you whether they're numb or not it seems to be one of the things that people are really really rubbish at you know you can say how you're feeling are you hungry you know or how much pain are you in but are you numb or not it's something that people just completely freeze on pun intended you know you can't get them to make any sort of intelligible sense out of where they're numb and how profoundly they're numb and how quickly they're going numb and whether they can remember whether they went numb in the past easily or you know what they can feel so so you've got regional blocks which are as I say 
literally hit and miss and uh, slow and unreliable if you need to get something done quickly then you've got uh, local uh, local infiltration which is where mainly in the upper jaw where you inject alongside a tooth and because the bone is reasonably porous and uh, the, uh, the the venous drainage from the skin over the bone and the um, is uh, tends to be partly through through the bone and back up the, the veins to which the teeth are connected uh, you tend to get like a, a regional, uh, a, a local, a local effect, which is pretty good for top teeth. But again, if you've been in the business for a long time, you'll know that really, for most uh, procedures that are capable of causing any any significant amount of pain, you need to have some sort of palatal coverage as well. So you have to inject buccally, let's say to a six, and palatally, certainly if you're going to extract it or anything. But even sometimes if you want to root treat it, because how are you going to get the platelet root numb if it's uh, if it's the buccal nerves that are in the process of dying and the platelet root is a bit behind and it's still pretty viable? Um, you know, you know, the patient's not going to want to have you stick a 20 reamer inside a platelet canal if you haven't had a platelet injection. So then, <clears throat> one up from uh, local is. Um, I would say is this interligmental now <coughs> going up in orders of numbness and from what I can work out it says you should use topical and let's face it I mean topical only literally takes 60 seconds to work um, and the way you should find this out get your topical anaesthetic put a bit on your own gum and then ask yourself when has it taken effect? You know, when is it when is it ceasing to have more effect? And usually that's about a minute. Um, and then uh, what you then do is you place the needle uh, inside the uh, ligament and uh, press the press a button, and then it starts injecting at point zero zero six millilitres uh, a second I think or if you there's some funny footwork you can do on the pedal to make it jump up to 0 0.009 millilitres a second and to give you that sort of context that's just a that's a that's a like a very slowly dripping needle so it is it is very slow um, and in fact you know it is possible if the patient sort of Prime to expect a, 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 some mild discomfort, a bit like they would be if they were having the COVID jab. You know, you're going to have a vaccination. You know, you're going to get some mild discomfort, but nothing too terrible. Then, um, then uh, you probably don't need the the, the topical. Um, but I don't know, I haven't really established whether or not topical is a good idea or not at the moment. I've done it a couple of times without, and to be honest with you, apart from a little bit of initial discomfort, as soon as the patient realises that that is the totality of it, you know, that all you then do is just stand there like a numpty, listen to this thing beep every second, um, then then the patient like immediately relaxes because they think, oh, this is, you know, I can, I can do this. Oh, I've looked out for that beaver lately. Not the beaver, it's a beaver, it was a badger. Perhaps it's uh, someone's collected it. Or perhaps it was merely stunned and unconscious for a week and it's woken up and walked off. More rubbish, look. This is what I, uh, I tend to prefer the idea that it was just stunned and it's woken up and walked off. Or oh, was it here? No, it was here, wasn't it? Is it here? Is it here? Is it here? Is it here? No, it's gone. Something's uh, sniffed it and dragged it off. It's made a meal for something. Right, 
Right, let's drive up to these lights and watch them go red as soon as we get to them. Oh, it's my lucky day. Incidentally, if you are uh, caught driving through red light, um, there is a way of uh, looking at it which might uh, show that uh, in fact your offence was not as bad as you think because um, let's say you're driving along at the sort of speed I am driving now, it's 30 miles an hour and then you need to convert that to feet per second and what you can do is you can say at 30 miles an hour I was driving, I don't know, 25 feet a second or whatever it is, plus, uh, you know, it took me half a second to react to the light changing, uh, and in that time that was another 10 feet, and then by then, uh, you know, it was, um, I judged that it, was, um, it wasn't safe to try and stop. And apparently that's the only defence that has occasionally worked. Anyway, I digress. Nicely ploughed field on the left. When you get a nicely ploughed field, you always get like a furrow left down it at some point. And uh, you have to go to a ploughing match to know why. It's got something to do with uh, single-sided and double-sided ploughs. Anyway, so you can, some do you, I mean, you might use topical or you might not. And then as far as the anaesthesia goes, uh, they tell you to inject measly and distally, buckily. Now, I mean, obviously the bit that you'd need to question is where, what you want to do is obviously you want to um, inject the, around the apex, don't you, ideally, of the tooth. That's where the anaesthetic needs to go. And so you have to ask yourself why, if you're going to squirt anaesthesia down the periodontal ligament, why would it track to the apex? Why would it? I mean, does it naturally track to the apex? I mean, that would be lovely if it did, wouldn't it? And, you know, it is possible that it might. And the reason is that when you jab this needle down the periodontal ligament you do you are slightly displacing the tooth you're not displacing it much on a young person where they've got a young uh, periodontal ligament and it's not you know it's still pretty well intact you're obviously displacing it more let's say on someone who's in their 50s who's had a bit of periodontal uh, bone loss and and certainly you're displacing it on um, there's blue lights flashing ahead. I have to watch out for this guy because he's already been up the curb once behind me. Yeah, so so let's say you pop the needle in and it pushes the tooth over to one side of the socket and then theoretically that would leave it free, wouldn't it, on the other side for the anaesthetic to fill up the void if you like, not negative pressure, but the negative space that's opened up. So we'll carry on, we'll carry on with that and then see, you know, but at the moment, my, I've been mean, naturally sort of pessimistic about intraligamental anaesthesia, which wasn't really taught when I was at dental school. I mean, we, we knew about it, but it was, you know, it wasn't a mainstream technique that you use on everybody. Um, it does seem to be surpassing my expectations. Uh, whether or not you need a £3,000 computer-controlled dispensing system to do that, I'm not, I think there, there are probably, I'm sure that there were periodontal um, ligament injection systems. But one of I remember, it was a bit, it looked like a grease gun. It had a sort of a lever on the side of it. So you could probably, um, you could probably do it manually. But certainly it's very slick when you're just standing there going la 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 and the thing's beeping and the patient's going numb. There's something a bit Star trek -y about it all. Um, and then then uh, at the top of the list you've got introsius, which is the stabid end system. Which is 
you know, this is the sort of the gold standard in terms of anesthesia, insofar as you, you use a bit of topical, um, you then uh, <clears throat> inject a, a small, like a just a little tiny little blob of anesthesia into the um, intrapapillary area, still trying to keep in, inside the fixed gingiva, and then literally immediately um, with, with the uh, bony uh, trepan in the slow handpiece, create a hole which goes should go into the jawbone, into the cancellous bone. So through the cortical plate into the cancellous bone, which is at that point is entirely painless. And then uh, that's then uh, that hole is then immediately used to inject using a short stubby needle, which you use for the local. Uh, to inject anesthesia directly into the cancellous bone, which very quickly diffuses around the um, patient's teeth, and, and and I mean literally they are then stone cold bonkers numb in thirty seconds or less, you know, less five seconds, ten seconds, and that can be miraculous for for people who are have been in a lot of pain and they need an instant extraction, which may well be infected and very difficult to anaesthetise normally. Or um, uh, where you, I mean, I wouldn't say that you would do it when you want just wanted to work quickly, um, because it's it's fiddly and it's it doesn't always go entirely how you'd like it to. When it does, it's it's miraculous. You know, you literally put the put the force uh, put the, the syringe down and you pick the forceps up and you take the tooth out straight away. And there's usually, you know, no bleeding or anything because um, <clears throat> there's a load of adrenaline actually in the in the bone. So, um, although you don't get dry sockets or anything from it, but so what are the what are the tips and traps regarding intraosseous bone injections? Well, I would say by far and away. Your biggest problem is finding the bloody hole because you create the hole and you then want to put the needle in it and if you get it the old needle is in the hole you've just created straight away you're doing very well if it takes you a minute to find the bloody thing again then you're still doing well you know now the trick is to give your nurse the syringe and get her to orient it the same way as you're drilling the hole. And then literally put the drill down, get her to hold in the cheek out all the time so you can see what you've just done. Hold the cheek out and then get her to put the syringe straight in your hand and stuff it straight in the hole that you literally haven't taken your eyes off. Okay? that's the best way to do it and if you do it like that then it works really well but the nurse has to understand her role in this her role is to deliver that syringe to you within two seconds of you taking that drill drill out of the hole so you know the angle and you know because if you're so much as a millimeter off half a millimeter off that needle is so sharp it will snag on the bone around the hole and it will give you the appearance of just butting into solid bone and uh, you, you have to go hunting around for it. Now, this is not painful for the patient, but it is st very stressful for you. And um, and uh, uh, you know, and, and uh, f frustrating, and really puts you off the technique. Now, what you can do is um, you can bend the needle. If you're going in at a funny angle, then you can pre-bend the needle to make sure that, like for example, you can put the syringe in sideways, but the, the needle's pointed forwards at 45 degrees or something, if that's the, the angle of the hole. As a last resort, what I've done is, I have drilled a second um, hole, uh, and done it through a second hole, and of course what you do is, you with the drill, you try and uh, <coughs> find out where the first bloody hole is, and sort of try and redefine it, but then <clears throat> what happens is you can get these stupid situations where you can find the hole with the drill, but you can't find the hole with the needle. Or you do um, a second hole, 
and then you squirt the anaesthetic in the second hole and then it all comes squirting out the first hole. Um, and the other thing I would say is that although in the instructions it says stay, stay on the attached gingiva and this is because um, uh, you don't want to be uh, drilling bone through loosely attached gingiva because it's going to it's going to wind it all up isn't it? it's going to screw it all up but i would say that providing the um, gingiva is wet enough moist enough you aren't really going to run into that problem providing you're only moderately into the um, free gingiva if you're uh, drilling too far in the free gingiva you're not drilling in the right place anyway that brings me to the last uh, problem with intraosseous anaesthesia, which is that you're really just guessing the root pattern of the teeth. Now, with experience, obviously, you can do this, and um, it's um, it's easier to inject, let's say, between the five and the six, than it is to inject, let's say, between the two roots of a six, because if the roots are swept back, then you might end up injecting and hitting the uh, periodontal ligament of the of the six, which the patient will feel. Um, so sometimes what happens is that you'll sort of get through the cortical bone, and then you'll still still won't you know you'll get that feeling when like when you're putting up a curtain rail and you you drill through the brick and then you realise that you're behind it you've got a concrete lintel and the drill's not going to go in any further, uh, and that's because you're trying to drill into the root and obviously there's no point drilling into the root because even if you squirt into the root, it's not, it's not going to get anaesthesia. So um, it is important that you, um, I'll say, sort of stay current and uh, check. Like, it's almost like an implant. You have to check like three times that you, you're going into the right place. Are you going down? Are you, are you likely to strike oil? You know, are you going to find some cancellous bone where you're going to end up? And uh, in, as I say, uh, most of the time it works really well. That's the only few, the very, very occasionally few um, problems that you might have. But, um, but you can overcome all of these. And then you've always got your um, local or regional blocks as a backup, haven't you?